Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. Positively. Yes. Exactly. Hey guys, how you doing? This time we're not going to wait about four or five minutes. We're actually going to wait about 15 more seconds. Um, and then we'll just, we'll go from there. We will absolutely go from there. Yes. Hopefully everybody can see me and hear me correctly. <clears throat> All right. Hey, hi. how is everyone doing? My name is Sharon Combs, and this is UCDI's Think on Purpose. I'm actually in Nashville, Tennessee today. Uh, we're doing a, there's a conference going on here at, uh, at Opryland. Lots of foliage and greenery in Opryland here in Nashville, Tennessee. But that's where we are. And today our topic is going to be not to be. It actually comes from who are you not to be. And it's, we're going to talk about playing small and what it really does as it relates to greatness and how playing small sometimes you actually downplay yourself or you play small because maybe you don't want someone to feel a certain way or a certain person to feel a certain way. But the truth of the matter is, when you engage in the liberty God has created you to walk in, you give other people license to do the same. Um, most people who feel like they have to walk around on eggshells, well, I don't know. I don't really know most people. So a large portion of individuals who feel like they must walk around on eggshells, really the other people aren't making you feel that way there may be something internal which is why we say think on purpose there may be something internal that you have an internal dialogue you're having and you have this internal dialogue and from that internal dialogue you reach this internal conclusion that says i'm going to do this because i don't want them to do this but actually you haven't even allowed them to have any input in say like any input or say in the heart of the matter so really you kind of had a whole conversation with yourself and you came with a conclusion that probably only has to do with yourself and then you give them credit or you blame them for you not being fully who you call to be or for you walking on eggshells and truthfully they had nothing to do with it yeah let that sink in for a little bit they had nothing to do with it it was a choice you made you made a choice to play small and you're giving someone else the credit or the blame for it and I just want to encourage you, let's look at their process. Let's decide to be the best that we can be every day. Not legalistically. Hey, Lisa, how are you doing? Not legalistically, not in such a way that you put undue pressure on yourself, but be willing to try it out. Be willing to try to, you know what, spread your wings a little bit. Hey, am I flying? Spread your wings a little bit. Get used to that. Let the muscle memory kick in of the fact that you're called to do things that only you can do and things that you are able to do and you have license to do. There are gifts that have been placed inside of you for you to do these things, whether that is influence someone, whether that is create a path for someone else, whatever it is, do you, do you, not do you in a way that gives you liberty to encroach upon someone else or, or demean or belittle someone else, but be all that you can be. You know, I know that sounds like an army slogan, but hear me when I say be you and be all that you can be. So again, when it says not to be, it is who are you to be or not to be. You are actually to be you. You playing small doesn't serve anyone. It really doesn't. And sometimes you can give yourself a fake pat on the back and say, well, I didn't want them to feel bad or I didn't want this or I didn't want that. But again, that may be a conversation you are fully having with yourself in your own head and you're not allowing that other person to have any input or any say in the matter. They may not even be thinking about what you're thinking about, i.e., think on purpose. Be, deli be deliberate and diligent and intentional even in your thought life. You can do that. It's possible for your thoughts to serve you. And if you don't train your thoughts to serve you, you will unwittingly serve your thoughts. 
So again, we're in Nashville. I'm in Nashville with uh, Sips Consults. Booyah! Sips Consults doing it in Nashville, Tennessee right now at Opryland. Uh, the conference there at Opryland. And I do want to say this. I want to just do a plug for this gentleman I just met um, maybe about a week or two ago. And his name is Delatoro McNeil uh, II. Awesome, awesome and dynamic person. But there was an anointed for business conference that I went to. And it shifted. I mean, man, it shifted something in my life. But I just want to say, and it's funny because when you look back, you can see a common thread in your life. I just want to say, you know, there's business and then there's church. And sometimes we're so busy separating the two that we actually try to separate God out of our business. But it's him that gives us the power to produce wealth. You understand? It's him that has the cattle on a thousand hills. It is God. So when we try to separate God from anything, come on. What separates God? The only thing that really separates God, you know, okay, I'm not even going to get into that. The fact of the matter is, Stop trying to separate God from what you are called to do. It's okay. Don't let the world put that in your mind. Here we go. This is the thread, y'all. So if you guys are paying attention, this is the time to hone in right here, right now. It is a lie. It is a lie from the pit of hell that sometimes comes from the mouths of friends that says you have to separate who God has called you to be and what God has called you to do you have to separate God from that in order for you to do business. That is a false statement. It is false. It is, it's a lie. It's a lie. I don't care who says what. And I don't care what type of facts and figures try to make you feel like, okay, well, I'm here so I can't say God. I'm not saying you have to go and preach to everyone. But you don't have to try to deny who has given you the wisdom, the grace, the perseverance, and the wherewithal to withstand, to remain patient while everybody else is flipping out and going out of their mind, to hold your tongue when everyone else is gossiping and saying insidious things about the next person, to, to maintain integrity when people tell you you have to take shortcuts or you have to do it this way if you want to advance, to be gracious in an in a area where everyone says you have to be cutthroat. It's a lie from the pit of hell that says you have to engage in these worldly and secular and unethical methods in order for you to be who you're called to be if you believe you have to engage in those behaviors to reach the end goal that god has for you i challenge you right now to to look at that and say where did that come from what is the origin of that thought process and why do i put more faith and stock in it than i do in the word of god and then look back over your life there are times when your past will try to hold you in, and there are times when you can look back over your life with God and see the faithfulness of the Lord and realize, no, I don't have to tell a lie to get to the truth. No, I don't have to steal what's been given to me. No, I don't have to try to try to sneak in the side door or crawl in through a back window. I can walk through the front door because these doors have been opened for me. So when you try to separate God from what God has called you to do, and it doesn't mean that because you're a Christian, you have to be in the church preaching. Like that has to be your only platform. You live your life. You live your life at this conference. I'm, and, I, and I have to give credit to, to the people who said it at the conference. But there was a statement that came out and they said, so shine. And so when y'all hear me say, so shine, just know I'm going back to this anointed for business conference because the Bible says, so shine that men may see your good works and give glory to your father who's in heaven. So when you are so shining, being who God has called you to be, not in some, oh, look at me, I'm the baddest and all that, not in, not in some vain and self-serving way. So shine so that men may see your good deeds and give glory to your father who's in heaven. You can do this in the business arena. It's a lie that says you have to separate God from this. Come on. I feel it. Y'all hear me. I sense it right now. There's some truth in this part. There's truth right here. So let this get in and let this hit your chest and let it, let, let it just flow all through every part of your being because there's truth here. You do not have to separate God from your operation in business. You know what? You know why people are successful in business? Because they, are, they have integrity. They operate in integrity. Their character is on point. What they do in the dark is also what they do in the light. There are reasons that you are successful in business. So, yes, yeah, so shine. That's right, Lisa. So shine. So when you feel like, oh, I, 
oh, I have to separate this from this. That's not true. It's not true at all. You don't have to separate God from what you're doing in business. You don't have to separate the Lord from what you're called to do in business. You actually, your business is just yet another platform for you to show who God is, how faithful he is, just how faithful he is. He's faithful when it seems like everything is just flowing and easy breezy. And he's faithful when things get hard and a little tough, because during those times, you're still more committed to the word of God and his principles and his facts. And you're able to hold your form instead of you being like, oh, no, that's not the case. Or, oh, no, that's not this or that's not that. You know, you being able to hold your form in a time when other people are going crazy and scapegoating and stabbing each other in the back and doing those things. When you're able to hold your form and hold your tongue and say, no, I'm not going to do it that way. You are so shining. And hear me when I say that is the highest principle of business right there. That is the highest principle of business. That's value. That is value right there. So do not feel, hey, it's Monday. I know everybody went to church yesterday and now you're back here at work. And sometimes we feel like, okay, I'm back at work. Like, oh, I'm out of church. I'm back at work. No, it stays with you. It stays with you. So here on this Monday, so shine. Hold your form. Keep doing what you are doing. And so shine. Don't feel like you have to separate God. God is the one who gives you the power to get wealth. God gives you a soft answer to turn away wrath. God gives you the right words at the right time when you are talking to a client and it just drops. And you're like, oh, this, boom. And you, you, you serve it up on a platter for your client and it's the right answer for their needs. That's all God. So do not feel like, and how dare the world or anybody else tell you that you can't give him the credit for that. Yes, you can give him the credit. So you're playing small. You're playing small. It doesn't serve your clients. It doesn't serve you. It doesn't serve your children. It doesn't serve the people we are called to influence. It doesn't serve any of that. Be you and be you to the full and so shine. So shine. I'm telling you, if an anointed for business conference comes anywhere near your area, please get to it. Because those are business individuals who are sold out for the Lord. Sold out for the Lord and, and are using business platforms to show this is for the glory of God. This is for the glory of God, not for the glory of me, not for you to think I'm all this or worship me. And for a person to become an idol, that's not the case. I'm just saying, do not play small. Do you. Do you. Do you. Don't do you like... You understand what I'm saying. Do you do who God has called you to be and shine. So shine. So shine. There you guys hear it right there. So shine. So the man may see your good works and give glory to our father who is in heaven, who is in heaven. When we play small, we are actually putting a cap. We're, we're putting a cap on who God is, not only in our eyes, but in the eyes of our audience and our sphere of influence. And we're telling people, yeah, we're saying one thing with our mouth, but we're undermining it with our very actions. Because we're still hemming and hawing and playing small. Because somewhere we're more worried about what someone else is going to think than allowing God to fully get the glory. That's in what we call good times and in times that are not as good. So I want you guys to know that I think I'm done. I think I'm done. That's it. That is our UCDI think on purpose moment. When you find yourself playing small or trying to be less than because you're trying to be equal with what the status quo is. Come on and, re and just know that what the status quo is may not be the status quo you're called to. So shine. Do not play small every day. Do your best. Do your best. But so shine. Do you guys have any questions for me? I don't see any questions in the Zoom chat box. If you came on a little later, my name is Sharon Combs. Um, we have a group here called Think on Purpose. We want to be deliberate and intentional in our thought life. Uh, this is born out of UCDIs. You can do it, uh, which is just just that's who I am and that's what we're doing and that's what we're talking about today and so so shine so shine any questions all right I don't see any questions in the zoom box as I said this one will be a little you know I'm in Nashville here for a conference so this one will be a little shorter and uh, if you guys know I think her name is Marianne Williamson she talks about um, sometimes we ask ourselves who am I to be beautiful brilliant you know who are you to be beautiful brilliant amazing, strong, uh, insightful, witty. I'm adding words. And then it says, actually, who are you not to be? And when you operate in the fullness of who you are called to be, you unconsciously give other people that same right. And I just want to let you know that when you are free to be you, you, cre you create and spark in other people, 
not only an awareness, but an intention and a desire for them to be free to be them because it's like it's possible. Yes, with God, all things are possible. So don't try to separate God because God is the one that allows us to do it. Don't try to separate God from that. And don't let anybody make you feel ashamed for believing God and being a servant of God and saying my business is better because God is the one who is helping me do it. Don't do that. When shame tries to come your way or somebody tries to get you to cower down, I hope you hear my voice saying, so shine. I hope you hear my voice saying, no, I'm not going to separate God from the good things in my life and only call on him when things are a little bit crazy. All right. So that's it. You guys have a wonderful day. You guys, <laughs> thank you so much. I appreciate that. You guys have a wonderful day. I want to encourage you to bless somebody, be kind to somebody. Uh, even when you're talking to somebody, I want to I want to encourage you to listen to them, not just what's being said, but what's not being said. And this week, you know what? Let's ask the Lord. Let's just pray and pray that we'll have the right word at the right time to say to our customer, our client, our colleague, uh, our business. If it's people we're partnering with, our joint venture, whatever it is, let's ask the Lord to help us be able to connect and say the right word at the right time for that individual that's life changing. Not that just makes them feel good for a minute or gets us to sell, but something that is life changing. All right. So shine. You guys have a wonderful day. Have a wonderful week. I will see you on Thursday. And remember, think on purpose. Be diligent in your thought life. Stay blessed.